Thank you so much for joining me today on Just Praise Him Radio. I'm your host, Linda Lomax, and my job is to inspire you to a closer walk with Christ. Now here's the show. Hello, believers. Welcome to the Just Praise Him radio show. I'm your host, Linda Lomax, and today, January 5th, 2016, is going to be another all-prophetic show. Um, I don't know how long these are going to continue, but they're, they're continuing for now, and they seem to be a big help to you, so I'm happy about that. Um, I wanted to mention I'm still getting words for people who are mailing in their donations. I don't know how long that's going to continue, but so far it's every single one of them uh, since December 5th. Um, You can also pray to receive a word during these podcasts, and if the prophetic shows continue, or even if they don't, sometimes I get words for people during podcasts, and then just watch the podcast. Sorry, I'm going to have to read from my laptop because the mouse stopped working, and I can't uh, print the page out or anything, so I'm going to have to... um, I want to talk for a minute about to the people who God is moving because a lot of people are being moved right now. And the Lord told me some stuff the other day. I made a short video about it. You may or may not have seen it. Um, I had been praying about this a lot. And the Lord reminded me of what happened to my niece Angie. And I told that story a month or a month and a half, two months or something ago on the podcast. He was um, trying to move her from Amarillo back to western Oklahoma where her parents were. And she knew that he was leading her, but she kept resisting because she had a job she really, really loved in Amarillo. She had a you know place she loved to live in, and and she just you know didn't really want to give that up. And she said, "Lord, I'm I'm just not moving unless you give me a job, you know, because she's lived in Western Oklahoma her whole life, and she knows how bad the economy can be when the the oil is not when oil prices are down." So she's, she said, I'm, I'm just not moving unless you give me a job. Well, no job came. Then her best friend moved to Amarillo, and so she thought that was more of a sign than the leading that she was supposed to stay there, so she continued to stay. And she started getting robbed, and I mean bad robbed. The first time was her rent money, all her money for her car payment, and something else, and her wallet, uh, artwork that her grandchildren did, all kinds of stuff was taken in that, and then it continued to happen. So... The Lord reminded me about this the other day, and he said, anytime he tells you to go and you don't go, that the devil is given a wide open door to your finances. And I was like, oh, Lord, that's really serious. That's bad. So I wanted to share that with y'all for anybody who hadn't seen the little short video that I made last night, uh, because that's really important. When he says go, go, start packing, go, you know. And the other thing is how the Lord speaks to you about the move matters. Like when God moved me from Woodward and I didn't know where I was going and he moved me here in March 2009. He said, uh, I was in my prayer time one morning drinking coffee, praying, talking to the Lord, you know, and he spoke to me and he said, start packing. I'm moving you. And I said, okay. It took me a a month because I had to donate about two thirds of the stuff that I had to get the le- the, what was left into a little tiny U-Haul trailer because that's all I could pull with my pickup because I can't drive a U-Haul truck. And I proved that years ago trying to get one through a gate at a storage facility. There was a person on this side and a person on that side directing me, showing me where to go. I took out the fence, y'all, and I cannot make this up. I took out the fence and had to pay for that man's fence. I can't drive a U-Haul truck. So... I had to get everything that I had into a little U-Haul trailer. And even with that, I had to make a trip back up to Oklahoma and get my washer and dryer. So um, how he speaks to you to move matters. That tells you something about the time frame. If he says run or flee, that means hurry. Uh, if he says start packing, that's you know more leisurely. So pay attention to that if God is moving you or if, you've, if you're starting to have the feeling to clean out your stuff and pack and you know kind of streamline... That's the precursor to, hey, you're moving. Just telling y'all. Okay. Several of y'all have emailed and asked me if the, the names that I give in these prophetic shows are first or last names. 
I don't know. Um, he, he's never told me. How to tell if a word for you is, if when you hear that word, it sounds like God's just talking right to you, then that word is for you, regardless of the name that's attached to it. I mean, you can be listening to a sermon on television or on the radio, and if it sounds like it's speaking right to you, to your situation, that's God talking to you through His word. Okay? Um, what I have advised, especially people that I know on the internet, because I don't even like to get words for people that I know too much about their situation because I'm always afraid that my emotions will somehow affect the word. So I don't want to know anything about anybody's situation if they're praying for a word. Um, what I suggest you do is pray to get a word under, you know, some common name or a name that only you and God know. Okay? And... Then when the word comes through on the podcast, you'll know that it's for you because it'll be that name, but also because you will feel it. This is usually where I feel anything in my spirit. You will feel the witness in your spirit like it's jumping around, or you will feel like God is just speaking right to your life. That means the word is for you. I don't ever know if the word's for you or not. If you email me and go, was that word for me? I don't know. You're the one who knows. You're the only one who knows, you and God. So you have to figure that out for yourself. Okay. Tony, you are alone, physically or emotionally or both. The Lord says that people have left you, and there is an emptiness about you that the Lord has a plan to fill that emptiness. Tony, and I see that the end result is magnificent. I see you in a spirit-filled church with your hands lifted up in worship and you are smiling and you are happy again. Hang in there, Tony. God has a plan. And sometimes God allows people to walk away from us because they are not part of our destiny. God will lead you into this place in this life that He has shown me. He is saying to tell you that you are loved. Okay, Annette. You are romantically involved with a good-hearted man. You are interested in something long-term with this man, but you're not sure if it's God's will for your life or not. The Lord says, He is the one, but wait on God's timing, for all shall be revealed in due time. I'm not sure what that part means, but God said, wait on Him. Don't do anything different than you're doing now. Do not make any changes to your life, Annette. Wait on the Lord. This is very important. I don't know if you're thinking about moving somewhere for this person or some other kind of change. Don't do it. Don't do anything. Wait on the Lord. There's stuff you don't know yet is the feeling I get from this. There's more stuff that needs to be revealed. He's the right guy, but there's you don't know everything about it yet. Chin. Sorry, I'm having to use my arrow keys to go up and down. Y'all bear with me. You are very popular in a particular group of people. You may be a young person. I'm not sure. The Lord is saying this group is not a good and godly influence on you. And He is going to separate you from this, this group. The way that He does this may not be comfortable. But you are to submit yourself to God's will in this situation. That means submit. When he starts to separate you from this group, you go with God's will. You don't try to run back to the group and make it right, whatever happens. Submit yourself to God's will in this situation. That means don't fight being separated from them. The Lord is leading you into another group that will be spiritually beneficial to you. Raul. I see a deep sadness in your soul. This may be something from long ago, but it keeps you from being as happy as you could be. The Lord says to you, Raul, release this hurt to me by forgiving the person who did that to you. I'm not sure what happened, but that's what he's saying. I am going to heal you of this, and then your life will be filled with light and more happiness. Julie. I see that your life is kind of, I want to say bland, uh, it's kind of uneventful, and you have just a beautiful personality. The Lord wants you to know that He calls you His beautiful His beautiful daughter, Julie. That's what He calls you. That's my beautiful daughter, daughter Julie. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble pronouncing. That's my beautiful daughter, Julie. He is saying, ask me for what you want, daughter, for I see your heart, and I shall grant it to you. There's something that your heart longs for that you've been afraid to ask for, like you're afraid it's wrong to ask for it or something like that. But the Lord is saying, he's just waiting for you to ask for it so he can give it to you. Okay. 
Tamul, I'm not sure I'm saying this right, Tamul, Tamul, I see there is strife around you. It does not really concern you, but it takes away from your peace. Like maybe you live in a house and the people all around you are just fighting or the workplace. There is a demonic force that has been allowed into your atmosphere by the other people fighting around you that is trying to attach to you. You will know it as the thought that keeps tempting you. The Lord says if you give in to this temptation, the cost to you will be very great. Resist it and rebuke it every time it comes so that He can keep you safe. Just when that thought comes to you, I rebuke you, whatever, you can call the thought whatever you think it is. Uh, I rebuke you and in the name of Jesus, I renounce you. I turn away from you. I'm having nothing to do with you. Satan, not today, Satan. Cindy, there is something you have been mulling over in your mind like you're considering which way is right or what you should do about a certain situation and this constant bother of this situation in your mind is problematic to you because it's kind of just weighing on your mind, I guess is the way to put it. It is taking away from your peace. The Lord desires you would be at peace and He is asking you, what do you need to do to be at peace, Cindy? For that is what you must do. Wherever peace is, there I am also, he is saying. Follow peace, Cindy. I don't know what the situation is, but the Lord says follow peace. Tanya, I see a situation behind you in your past that is trying to catch up with you. It may be a sin from the past coming back to haunt you or a bad habit or addiction from the past that's tempting you again. The Lord says if you will strengthen your faith by taking in more of His Word, that means listen to sermons, uh, get the Word at church or study the Word for yourself, that He will show you exactly what to do about this problem. Do not fear, Tanya, for the Lord has already delivered you but you must have faith to walk in His deliverance. And you have to know His Word to have the faith to stand on that that you're delivered. Okay, I got a, a name that sounds like Aton. Uh, Aton, you are a business person and you are very efficient, very detailed. You pay attention to even minute details that other people miss, which is why you excel at business matters. The Lord says, though, that there is a detail in your personal life that has escaped your attention that is about to cost you very dearly if you do not get it taken care of right away. I don't know if this is a health matter or a relationship matter, but I see that idolatry is involved. And anytime we get involved in idolatry, if we put anything before the Lord or before what we should be doing for the Lord, the Lord closes our eyes. And when He closes our eyes, we can't see because we're blind. So you will have to ask the Lord to help you see it. You, you will need Him to open your eyes at least long enough to see this detail. And then He'll show you that and ask Him to show you what you have idolatry of. It may be your businesses or something or your business interests. Ask Him to show you where the idolatry is so you can repent of that so your eyes can be opened again. Um, Give me a second, a page down. Uh, look for the idolatry, Aton, and you'll find the detail you have missed. If you truly seek, the Lord says it will be revealed to you. Kathy, Kathy, you are going on a trip. And I see that you're concerned about this trip, which is to visit somebody, I think. It appears that there's a chance you could get stuck where you're going. I don't know if that's because of weather or because of some other reason. Kathy, there is an angel that I see right now in the spirit guarding you. And the Lord wants you to know that that's there. It's taller than you, so it's pretty good size. You are being protected, Kathy. The Lord says, go in peace. Daniel. Daniel, you have been sad inside for a long time, but you've learned how to just walk through life, and not many people even know that you're sad. The Lord knows, though, and He is showing me it makes Him sad because He says He wants you to live life fully, to enjoy all the benefits He has given you, and to exercise all the gifts that He has placed in you. The Lord says He is about to move in your circumstances, and you will be set free to be happy again. Do not struggle against this change but flow with it, for the Lord is doing this, and He is very joyful about setting you free. Go in peace, Daniel, and be happy, and bear much fruit for the kingdom of God. Jesus loves you very deeply. I think your bondage has to be to do with maybe being tied to some other person, 
walk in great kindness and service towards this person for now. Be the representative of Jesus in their life for now. Show them Jesus. God's fixing to move in your circumstances and you're going to be free. Okay. Ton or Vaughn. I think it's Vaughn. Uh, Ton or Vaughn. The Lord wants you to know He is very pleased with your walk and He says that you have been very obedient and says to tell you that you are entering a season of great blessing in your life. I see you very joyful. Very joyful. Filled with joy. It's like you just stepped into heaven. You are so happy. Breathe a sigh of relief because you are in a season of blessing which is your reward for your much obedience. The Lord says, well done. Whatever it was that you did, the Lord says, well done. John, the Lord called you an obedient little servant, which is kind of, to me is kind of comical because I see that he, he's kind of laughing, so y'all must have a lot of jokes between the two of you. You are an obedient little servant to the Lord. The Lord laughs and sings with joy over you. You bring him great joy. And he is about to bring laughter and joy into your life as well. Get ready to be blessed, John. The Lord says, get ready. You do everything you can to glorify the Lord and do His work, and He is about to bless your socks off in ways you don't know about. So these are going to be surprises, I guess. Get ready, John. Y'all bear with me as I page up and down with an arrow key. It's not as easy as it looks. Thomas. You are a quiet and thoughtful person. You think very carefully about anything that you're going to do. You're not a spontaneous risk taker person. The Lord says that He has placed a gift of wisdom in you and that that is what makes you that way. That makes, that's what makes you serious and thoughtful and like planning your steps very carefully. The Lord is saying He wants to start using this gift that He's placed in you. Um, he wants to use you to advise and counsel others through this gift. Um, so He's going to bring people to you that are going to ask for advice or ask for counsel, or they're just going to start telling you about their problems and their situations, which is probably unusual for you to, for people to start pouring out their heart to you like that. And He's going to give you the answers for them. He's going to speak wisdom to these people through you. This is going to be your work for Him. Laney, you have such a beautiful, bright spirit, Laney. What a joy your spirit is to the Lord. There is a huge blessing coming your way, Laney. But when it first arrives, it will not seem like a blessing. I think it might be a person coming to stay with you or something along those lines. The Lord says to treat them with great kindness and show them that you are just so happy that they are there with you. And He is going to bless you beyond your wildest imaginations if you will do this for Him. I think that this may be a person who feels like they're a burden and they're going to be very sad to impose. But someone's going to come and stay with you. You're going to be... I don't want to say taking care of them, but you're going to definitely be giving them a place. Andre, the Lord has a job for you. It is in another area from where you are now, and you will not have to look for it. He is sending someone to tell you about it. Uh, it's a much better job, but at first it won't look much different than what you have now. But there are hidden blessings in this job that He wants you to have. Take this job in peace, Andre. He is going to bless you mightily through it. Amber, there is an issue in your life you need help with that you have sought the Lord over um, for a very long time. It may be weight loss or something like that. Uh, but the Lord is saying to you, woman of God, get ready for this day. I have released you from your bonds. I have answered your prayers. Believe my words to you. That means claim this promise. Claim it and walk in it. I have heard your petitions of me and you are set free. Frank, Frank, you live a very structured life. I mean, I saw literally like a box in the spirit, just a certain area like fenced off. You go from point A to point A, B on these days, and then to point C on that day, and it's like that. And then the next week, you just repeat all the same steps. The Lord says you do this mainly out of fear. You don't like change. Something in your past taught you that change was a bad thing. But the Lord is saying to you, Frank, change with me is a very good thing, and I'm about to make some major changes in your life because I want to give you so much more than you have had. 
before. Submit to these changes, for I am blessing you. Frank, submit to the changes. Tyler, I see that you have a gift of music. You have not used it much yet, only locally, but the Lord says He wants you to use it for His glory. He is going to give you songs to write for Him. And these are songs about what is coming in these end times. One is a song of warning to unbelievers. One is a song about God's grace. He is saying, write these and practice them because He's going to open doors to you. He's going to open doors and then He's going to open big doors. And you're going to be performing these songs for Him. Okay, this name I couldn't make out exactly. Now, y'all, I spent hours this morning meditating before the Lord, receiving these names and receiving these words. I don't always hear the names real clearly. It's Moby or Mo. I'm going to call you Mo because I'm not sure. It could be a nickname. Uh, it's Moby or Mo something or Mo. Mo, you have a hidden secret, something you don't want anyone else to know that you have kept well hidden for years now. I think this may be an abnormal attraction or a sinful habit, but I'm not sure. The Lord says He wants you to release that demon to Him. That's what it is. It's a demon. He's, he wants you to know that is a demon. And He is going to set you free. You will never have to worry about this again once He frees you because whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Just release it to Him, Mo. He's going to set you free. And He said to tell you this was Satan's attack against your soul. Tina, you desire a new start. The Lord says He is giving you one. You are moving. Uh, he has a new life for you in a new place, and you are to release everyone in the old place. There, you have attachments in this place He's moving you from, and He wants you to let go. Uh, he wants you to release everyone in the old place to Him and just go when He tells you to go. All is ready for you there. Everything's already set up and ready. He's gone before you. Go in peace, Tina. Billy, I see a lot of intensity in your life right now. And the Lord is showing me this is taking a toll on your health. There is the beginning of a disease that is not showing symptoms yet in your body. Billy, you need some peace. The Lord said you need some peace. Cut off the drama around you and refuse to participate in it. Refuse even to listen to it because if you, it gives demons access to you when you partake of mess like that because you're coming into agreement with it. Okay, when, you, when we listen to something like that, we're coming into agreement with it. Cut it off and begin to confess your healing. The Lord is saying get into His Word and find the scriptures about healing and confess them daily, every single day. Study and listen to sermons on healing until you have the faith that you are healed and no sickness uh, has or has the right to you and to your body and your healing will manifest and this terrible disease will not be allowed to take your life from you. If you will do this, you will never even have to encounter the, the uh, diagnosis, I don't believe. I believe that you will uh, head it off the pass as we say in Texas. You'll cut it off before it can get started. Excuse me, all my throat is getting very dry. I gotta take a drink of water. These words must be helping somebody because the devil sure did try hard to stop this show. Chan, you have an anointing for wealth. God has placed a gift in you that you are able to make money easily. Uh, but he says that you're not sharing that wealth as much as he wants you to. Chan, the Lord wants you to sow into his kingdom. He's going to tell you where and he's going to lead you by his spirit. There are many works he wants to do where you are that need financing. This is the reason that he placed the gift of getting wealth in you. There are people like you that their whole calling is to fund the works of the kingdom in the earth. Chan, the Lord says if you do not obey him in this... Um, I see that you want to hold on to your wealth that you're afraid of losing it because you grew up very poor. If you do not obey him in this, he's going to cause your wealth to be taken from you. Uh, I'm not sure how, um, but it's going to be taken from you. But if you do obey him in these things, uh, if you will begin funding the works that he wants you to fund as he leads you, then he is going to increase your wealth supernaturally. He's going to lead you to opportunities that nobody else sees. Uh, ground floor type stuff that he will show only to you that will be invisible to everybody else so that you can get in and get as much of that opportunity as you want before anybody else even sees there's an opportunity there okay Al Al I see you in a garage I'm not sure if you work on cars or you just hang out in your garage a lot 
you are troubled in your soul about a situation with your son. And the Lord says to you, Al, that he warned your son many times and he sent warnings by others, but he refused to listen. And now he's in this mess. I, my feeling is that he's in a, a legal mess. And he's gotten in trouble with the law. I think um, he's looking at a long sentence or something. Al, do not be troubled by this, the Lord says, because the Lord has a plan for your son, even where he is and, and what's happening is not in vain. The Lord wants you to begin to praise Him for this trouble, for the very situation. Praise Him for the trouble that your son is in. Because He is going to turn it to good, although it don't look good right now. God is on this, Al. And He is using the situation. He is even now positioning people to help your son right where he's at. Do not despair. God has a good plan for your son, a plan to give him a hope. And a future. Do not look at the circumstances, but keep your your eyes on God and walk in peace out. This is all going to turn out okay. Uh, and while I'm on that subject, that's the last word I have. But sometimes the Lord will cause someone to get caught with drugs or, or in a situation like that to save their life. I know of more than one case where that happened, where the Lord literally uh, used a legal situation and that person was arrested and it saved their life. So, uh, or put them in prison where they couldn't get the drugs as readily because they were about to overdose. So anytime something like that happens, we need to be thankful for it because God's still at work. God's still on the throne and he can turn all things to good for, for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And that's all of us. So I hope that this show has been a blessing to you. Um, I pray that these words will minister life to you and help you have hope. Those of you who are, who are feeling a little bit hopeless that God spoke to. Uh, I'll continue doing these kind of shows as long as the Lord continues giving them to me. It's up to Him how long they go on. I, I'm fine with them going on forever. It's up to Him. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, Jesus bless you. I hope that y'all all have a great week. Thank you so much for tuning in today to hear Just Praise Him Radio. You can contact me by mail at P.O. Box 127, Princeton, Texas, 75407, or by email at Glenda Lomax at JustPraiseHim.today. Just Praise Him Radio is not affiliated with any church, denomination, or nonprofit organization.